Are there further amendments to H.R. 1155? For purpose of gentlewoman from Washington, seek recognition. I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will report the amendment. Amendment to H.R. 1155 offered by Ms. Del Bene. Page 29, line 21, insert after code the following, except for a special rule. Page 29, insert after line 24 the following. Six, special rule. The term special rule means a rule made by an agency in response to an emergency. The gentlewoman from Washington is recognized on her amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first, I'd like to address the underlying premise of most of the bills we've been considering today. It seems there's not a shortage of ways for this committee to attack regulations and regulators that are focused on keeping our food and medications safe, our air and water clean, and our families safe. Regulations have an important role to play, not just in public health and safety, but also in new and emerging industries. Um, consider products like drones. Congress instructed the Federal Aviation Administration to work on integrating them into domestic airspace. And just last week, the FAA granted a company in my home state, Amazon, permission to begin test flights outdoors. Um, when it comes to new technologies like this, we need to have rules that will protect life and property. And if we left it up to this Congress to make those rules, we wouldn't move fast enough to address these issues. Like anti-regulation bills we've considered in the past, this bill is a very broad attack on regulations with no regard for public safety in any measure. So it's not surprising that the bill does not provide an exemption for times of emergency. My amendment would correct this mistake. We recently marked one year since the Oso landslide in my district, a horrific natural disaster that took the lives of 43 people in our community. Now, I find it terribly concerning that we're considering a bill today that could get in the way of an agency trying to do its job in the time of crisis. The idea that an emergency response team would be forced to abide by regulatory cut-go when people's lives are at risk is irresponsible and cannot be what this committee really believes in. Even worse, legislation like this that requires such blatant trades before an agency could act could lead to the politicization of public health and the safety in times of a crisis. A natural dis disaster could never be used as leverage to attack unpopular regulations, tying an agency's hands when com communities need their help most, and we must avoid that. So it's important to streamline regulations, but bills like this one create more burdens and are not jobs packages. And we can't put lives at risk for political posturing when we should be doing is working together on serious job measures, like rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure, for example. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on my amendment and to work together on creating jobs in a way that does not pe put people's lives at risk. And I yield back. Thank you. <clears throat> I recognize myself in opposition to this amendment. I oppose this amendment. Yet again, the amendment reflects a misunderstanding of the bill. The amendment would exempt rules issued by an agency in response to an emergency, but the Scrub Act would not threaten the repeal of regulations that responded to an emergency and are still needed. It focuses on repeal of regulations that are outdated and are no longer needed. For example, what if regulations still on the books were issued to respond to an emergency decades ago, but the emergency will not occur and the regulations are no longer needed? Why should those regulations be examined for repeal? They no longer serve a vital purpose. Use of the regulatory cut-go will not slow new emergencies either. The cut-go rules to be repealed will be pre-edited and can be used off the shelf for cut-go purposes. The opposite, I oppose this amendment and urge my colleagues to join me. Does anyone else wish to be heard on the amendment? The chair recognizes the gentleman from Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Johnson. Chairman. I move to strike the last word. Gentleman's recognized for five minutes. Thank you. One of the most pernicious aspects of H.R. 1155's regulatory cut-go requirement is that it would undermine the ability of agencies to quickly respond to emerging health and safety risks. Regulatory cut-go imposes a false choice between existing protections and issues new rules in response to an emerging threat to public safety and health. 
I can't imagine uh, what would have happened if, uh, or, or what would happen if an outbreak such as o uh, uh, Ebola would occur in the United States and uh, there was a need to, uh, to um, institute rules quickly to uh, protect the health and safety of Americans. Uh, with this rule in place, uh, it would uh, actually just stop the uh, rulemaking process for an inordinate length of time. There's no emergency, there's no em mechanism in the bill that would allow for an emergency. Uh, there's no uh, exception for that. And uh, this, this bill is just a meat cleaver approach to uh, the affairs of, uh, of uh, human beings in this country at this particular time in the nation's history. Very complicated issues, and uh, we can't allow ourselves to be governed by just meat cleaver approaches to governance. Uh, that's what this bill is. Uh, it's clear that it, uh, it uh, could, could be hurtful and foreseeable it's going to, if this bill were passed and signed into law, which is not going to happen, uh, it could wreak havoc on the ability of uh, the federal government to protect the health, safety, and well-being of Americans in just about every realm of living that, uh, that we're accustomed to. And for that reason, I support the Del Benny Amendment, and I'd ask my colleagues to support it as well. And with that, I'll yield back. The question is on the amendment. Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. No. In the opinion of the chair, the no's have it, and the amendment is not Mr. agreed. Mr. Chair, to. can I ask for a recorded vote? Yes, please. recorded vote is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Goodlatte? No. Mr. Marino? <laughs> Mr. Marino votes no. Mr. Sensenbrenner? She faked me. Mr. Smith? Mr. Shabbat? Mr. Shabbat votes no. Mr. Issa? Mr. Forbes? Mr. Forbes votes no. Mr. King? Mr. King votes no. Mr. Franks? Mr. Franks votes no. Mr. Gomert? Mr. Gomert votes no. Mr. Jordan, Mr. Poe, Mr. Chaffetz, Mr. Gowdy, Mr. Labrador, Mr. Farenthold, Mr. Collins, Mr. Collins votes no. Mr. DeSantis, Ms. Walters, Ms. Walters votes no. Mr. Buck, Mr. Buck votes no. Mr. Ratcliffe, Mr. Ratcliffe votes no. Mr. Trot, Mr. Trot votes no. Mr. Bishop, Mr. Bishop votes no. Mr. Conyers. Mr. Nadler, Ms. Lofgren, Ms. Lofgren votes aye. Ms. Jackson Lee, Ms. Jackson Lee votes aye. Mr. Cohen, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson votes aye. Mr. Pierluisi, Ms. Chu, Ms. Chu votes aye. Mr. Deutsch. Mr. Gutierrez, Ms. Bass, Mr. Richmond, Ms. Del Bene, Ms. Del Bene votes aye. Mr. Jeffries, Mr. Cicilline, aye. Mr. Cicilline votes aye. Mr. Peters, Mr. Peters votes aye.
Is there anyone else that wishes to vote or change the vote? I don't think I have voted. The gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Goodlatte. Mr. Goodlatte votes no. The gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Conyers. Aye. Mr. Conyers votes aye. Seeing no others, the clerk will report. Mr. Chairman, eight members voted aye, 13 members voted no. The noes have it and the amendment is not agreed to. Are there any other amendments?